Come on in on tonight. God bless you all. Thank you all for coming on. Back on for another midnight cry. God bless you all. Just a brief minute for people to get in. Some teaching on tonight for God's people, amen. I believe we're gonna flow without fail or delay. And I believe God has an awesome word for God's people, amen. Really good to be on tonight. God bless you all. Hello on the replay. Those who just coming in, hello on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you're watching it on from tonight. Back on front of the midnight cry. Got an awesome, awesome word for God's people on tonight, amen. About the fear of God. <coughs> And I think uh, in an hour like this, I think this is one of those kind of messages that really helps under people to under, help helps people to understand of who God is. And I believe these are one of those messages right here that brings reverence back to God, brings back respect back to God. Because if y'all, if you really know in this hour that the people have lost the reverence for God, they've they've lost the fear of God. These people don't fear God like they used to. They don't even fear us no more. The people, men and women of God no more. They don't fear us no more because we do a lot of playing around. We do a lot of joking. They don't take us serious no more. It's like they don't see us walking in no power. We don't walk in no power, no authority no more. They don't take us serious no more like they used to. The people used to fear the people of God. They used to fear to put their mouth on a man of, man of God, women of God, talking about men and women of God, putting their hands on elders and, and prophets. Man, people used to fear doing that stuff like that. And now you don't see no fear in the church right now. It's like the fear of God done left the people. You know, you see a lot of blasphemy stuff, but you see in this hour where the word of God is right. You know that the men will not endure sound doctrine. They're going to be people that's going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasures instead of lovers of God. They're going to hate those of truth. They're going to hate those of good. They're going to call good evil and evil good. I mean, we're in an hour right now. And I, this is why I think one of these kind of messages are imperative, uh, especially for the body of Christ about the fear of God. Somebody say on tonight, God restore my fear for you. Restore my fear. Say, God, teach me to fear you again. Some of us, we don't fear God. I'm going to tell you how I know we don't fear God because we don't have conviction. We don't have no cry. You know what I mean? We, we stay away from God. You know, we, we back it up from God. We don't desire to be in God's presence. We don't go to church. We don't fear God like we should. Because I can tell you how I know many of us don't fear God because we don't have reverence. We don't have respect for God. Reverence means respect. Bowing down, giving respect where it's due, giving respect to a name, bringing reverence back to the church. The people of God, do they don't fear God like they used to because if they fear God like they used to, the church would be in order. The church wouldn't be in disarray and discord. You wouldn't see all this kind of stuff in the church. If, if there was really a fear of God and that's how I know we don't, we don't have the fear of God because everything you see just by your natural eye, what you see, what going on in the church, you know, a lot of foolishness. We see a lot of stuff going on and this is why, because there's no fear. One thing about it and what I think in this hour is God is restoring the fear back to the church. He restoring the fear back to the church. People going to get to a place where they fear God again. They're going to fear God. One thing about it, if you ever got the voice of God, you would, you would have fear for God. If you got the voice for God, do you understand? And like, and this is why I, I began to pray and my man of God was giving us a message one time about the fear of God, how we need to ask God to teach us to fear him. Because one thing about it, there are some things that God can reveal to you about him 
that will fear you, but one thing or that will fear him. And one thing about it, this is this is the fear that's going to keep you safe. Somebody said on tonight, say, God, teach me to fear you again. God, I don't fear you like I used to. That's why I don't have conviction. That, that's why that, that's why I stay away from your presence. That's why I don't read your word no more. I don't have fear. That's why I disobey your word because I don't have fear. The reason why many of us don't fear because we don't believe. We don't believe. That's why we don't fear. If you believe that word, you would fear God. That word would give you a fear for God. The word of God is a lamp until our feet and a light until our path. And the entrance of the word bringeth light. One thing about this world, I can see some things in this world that'll make me, listen, not want to play with God. There's some things, listen, this word right here alone will make you not want to try God. You know, because if you see how wrath comes up on the children of disobedience, you see what disobeying the word of God can do. That one thing about it, if you ever, if you ever had an encounter with God, if God is ever chasing you, oh, you get a fear for God. You get a fear for him. And I, I, I had this message. I wrote this message down probably a couple of weeks ago. There are messages that I never did get a chance to do. And it was about the fear of God, the reverence of God. We need this stuff to come back in the house of God. You don't hear too many messages like this. I know I'm not the popular preacher. You know about you gonna get your you're gonna, you're gonna it's, it's your season and how you gonna be blessed and you gonna have a check in the mail. I, I know I don't have the popular word. And I already accept that. You know I already know I'm marching to the beat of a different drum. They say, well, you shouldn't fear. You shouldn't fear. No, you need a fear for God. You need a fear for God. I'm not talking about the kind of fear that that this world got. You know the wicked flee when ain't nobody chasing them. That kind of fear. I'm not talking about that kind of fear. I'm talking about a fear for the Almighty. A fear for the God that who's omnipotent. A God who's above and not beneath. A God who, who was it is to come. You know, I'm talking about a fear for this God. The same God we read every day. And the reason why I say this, why many of us don't fear God, because we don't believe. If you believe, you'd fear God. <coughs> Excuse me on tonight, and I just want to come on. And, and acknowledge y'all to um, acknowledge y'all and thank y'all for coming on and, and bless me with your presence on tonight. Tonight, I thank you for coming in and just coming in and, and having an ear to hear this word because he didn't have an ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God said, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger will not follow. So, everybody ain't gonna hear this right here. And so, I got a message on tonight that I'm gonna bless you with the fear of God. Amen. Y'all come in and share. Lift up your hearts also. Amen. And I got a scripture I wanna start off of uh, Proverbs 9 and 10. Proverbs 9 and 10. And he says, He says, Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And this is what he was saying. Now, the, listen, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you start, when you start having a reverence for this word, when you start having a fear of this word, you start having conviction. One thing about it, if God has truly gave you the Holy Ghost, you're going to have a conviction. You will have a fear of stepping outside of that word. How many of us have a fear of stepping outside of the word of God? Do many of us have a fear of grieving the spirit? See, we grieve the spirit. That's why I know many of us don't have a fear because we grieve God. We don't have respect for his name. We don't have respect for his church. We don't have respect for his people. The word of God say do good to those, especially the household of faith. We can't do good to one another. We don't know how to treat each other. That's how I know we don't have a fear. Do you know that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God? And so many people say, well, here goes this doom and, and gloom message. It's not about that. I'm trying to teach you how to fear the Lord. How to fear him. Say, God, restore my fear in this hour of you. Not the kind of fear where I have anxiety and I'm scared and my back is up against the wall. I'm panicked. I'm not talking about that kind of fear. This is a good fear. This is a good fear that, God, you know what? God, I want to stay in line with you. God, I want to stay in, in your word. God, I want to stay lined up with your holy word. God, I want to stay in holiness. God, I want to stay in your presence. God, I don't want to disconnect from prayer. 
God, I mean, I'm, I'm fearful of what happens to me if, if I don't stay connected to you. I'm talking about that kind of fear. Getting to a place when you hear the voice of God, when you become fearful when God speak. Because if you ever got to a place where God has spoken to you and you know for sure this thing going to come to pass, that can also be a fearful thing. When you when you when you hear God speak a, a dreading thing and you say, God, you know what? God, this thing right here, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little I'm a little afraid because I know this thing has to come to pass. Do you understand? See, I'm getting to a place where you understand the fear of God. When you say, God, I know for sure this thing you spoke. God, it may not be good. But God, I believe that just when you spoke this thing, it's getting ready to come to pass. Like when God speak, you can tremble. Because you say, God, you know what, God, what did I do wrong, God? I heard what you said, God. God, I just want to please you, God. I just want to stand in line with you, God. I don't want I don't want to be in error, God. Help me in this season. God, help me to restore my fear for you. So he says, now, the the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, this is something when you get wisdom, he calls it wisdom. Said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you start to fear God, when you start to get a taste of this word, David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, we know the Lord is good. We know he's good. We know what God can do. We know it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. It was the goodness. Yeah, we got the ain't God good message. But did we also hear who God was on the terrible side? He says, I am good and I'm terrible. I'm the God that create light. I create darkness. So I'm saying, I mean, how after a God who created evil and good, why is that somebody you would want to play with? Why is that something somebody you wouldn't want to fear? A man that created evil. A man that gives life. A man that takes life. A man that gives breath. I mean, this is the man that created the moon, the stars, created everything. Why wouldn't you not fear a man who created your heart beating in your chest? To just say, you know what, to make your heart stop beating and you drop dead right now. Why not fear somebody like that? Why not fear somebody who, who I mean, who has the authority to stop your life here and there. Everything fine, you operating, you paying your tithes, everything fine, and God will kill you right where you at. Why wouldn't you not want to fear a God like that? You know, even with his word, when you get in his word and you disobey God's word, when you say, God, you know, forgive me, God, I'm, I didn't want to step out. When you want to walk lightly in the anointing on your life, See, when God has anointed you and appointed you, don't you know it's a fearful thing to step in and out of the word of God? I'm fearful of that. That's why I say, God, forgive me, God, for anything I did wrong. Seen and unseen, God, remove the hidden iniquities. Stuff that I didn't know that was in me. See, I'm fearful because I don't want to displease God. God, did I think the right thing? Did I say the right thing? I'm talking about God restoring the fear. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He says, and the knowledge and the knowledge of the whole of, of holy is understanding. One thing about it, I remember when I first started coming in God. And I started getting God's word and started getting the understanding. When I started seeing who God was, I started seeing how God wasn't a joke. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what it is right now, like I was telling you, the reason why many of us don't fear God, because we don't truly believe. We don't believe what was written, that this word of God is forever, that this word of God is forever set on the heavens and the scriptures cannot be broken. So if this is the same word that God sent judgment then and, and how he, how he condemned people, how he killed people on the altar for playing with them. That's why I say, God, don't let me act like I got a monopoly on you. That I can just come in and out of sin and do what I want to do. That I can just be one foot in, one foot out. That I can just live with an unrepentance heart, un unrepentance, and do what I want to do. And that, there not be no consequences. 
I remember when I was doing any and everything, I had a reprobate mind. I couldn't feel nothing. I was in the church, still thinking about sinning. I was in the church. It's like my conscience was seared with a hot iron. I had no fear for God because God didn't draw me there. I was in the world, I was in the, in the clubs, doing everything, sexual immorality. See, I didn't have a fear of God because I didn't know God. I wasn't saved. God's spirit didn't draw me. The time when I was out in the streets and almost OD, doing, you know, partying, wilding, gambling. See, I didn't have a fear for God. I was disrespecting the name of God, disrespecting those who serve God. I was one of those who was there, but see, I didn't have a fear for God. I didn't know God. But see, now I got in this place when you get to know God and you get an understanding, you get wisdom. He says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You start to get a wisdom of who God is. To say, God, I know you are nobody to play with. God, I know this sickness in my body is not for no reason. I know these mind battles is, is not for no reason. God, this is why I thank you for mercy. Because God, if you didn't have mercy on me, you would have let me die in my sin. See, that right there will teach you to fear God. When you know he has the authority, do you understand? To mess you up right then and there. He has a power to take your life. He could have let you have your brains blowed out. He could have let you OD'd on the drugs. He could have let you die in the car wreck. But it was God's mercy. How many of y'all thank God for his mercy on tonight? He says mercies are renewed every morning. I thank God that you didn't allow me to be consumed in my mess. You didn't allow me to be consumed. With a stroke. You didn't allow me to be consumed with a heart attack. You didn't allow me to be consumed with the suicidal thoughts. See, it was God's mercy that alone, when God sent you through a trial, that'll teach you how to fear him. When you've been through a trial, that said, God, you know what, God, if you get me up out of this thing, I serve you for the rest of my life. That'll teach you how to fear him. When he puts you on your bed of afflictions, when he puts you on your deathbed, when those folks gave you six months to live, there are different ways that God can teach you how to fear him. God will also let you know that he ain't nothing to play with. So I'm saying, listen, wisdom don't come with age. Wisdom don't come with age because it's some old fools. Yeah, we got some young fools. But you got folks that's 50 and 60 years old. That still don't fear God after God that chasing them, hit them with heart attacks. Hit them with cancer, hit them with sickness, and then these people still don't fear God. God, don't let me be like that. This is why I say I'm beloved on tonight. God, restore our fear in this hour for you. It's already bad enough the world don't fear us no more. Do you remember how much authority and, and power that the saints used to walk in? People used to uh, fear a real man of God. A real woman of God because they knew they had authority. They knew these people had power. They used to fear the church back then. People didn't want to play with the church back then. People didn't want to talk about the church and mock the church back then because it's the realm and the mantles that the people used to come up under, that the saints used to come up on. I don't see no amens on tonight. But I'm going to flow without fail or delay. Because if truth be told, many of y'all don't have a fear for God. That's why you living like the devil. That's why you fornicating. That's why you living in adultery. And then you 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 have the, the audacity to justify your mess. To justify your sin. I know it, that's all right. You know, I'm not coming on talk about money is coming and breakthroughs is coming. I know I'm not telling you that. But I bet you in these next few months... When God starts sending you through these trials, I bet some of y'all get a fear. I bet you'll stop rejecting salvation. I bet you'll stop rejecting this word. Coming in and out of God, stepping in and out of God. One minute you in, one minute you out. God is getting tired. It's time for us to get back rooted and anchored in God. And it's time for God to restore the fear. Restore the fear in America. These people in America don't fear God. 
Sister Lisa, why are you on two different pages? People in America don't respect they, they don't listen, they don't they don't fear God no more. God restore the fear back to us in this hour. Restore the fear back to our hearts in this hour. Because if we truly fear God, our life would reflect it. If we if we truly feared God, you understand? We'd have a we'd have a respect for God. We'd have a respect for His Word. We'd have a respect for the people of God. We'd have respect for the man of God, the woman of God. Y'all don't respect nobody. You don't respect your leader. You half-hearted. You in. You out. Still full of adultery. Then speaking in tongues and act like can't nobody see you. That's how I can, I, I can tell that many of us don't have a fear for God. You don't have no conviction. You don't have no cry. I mean, everything, I mean, everything offends you. You was at a place where you said, you know what, God, for God, I live, for God, I die. God said conviction. You was like, God, it's about the Holy Ghost. It's about the anointing. Now you can't take nothing. You was at a place where you could repent. You were fasting. You was consecrating. But see, now we can't do that. Now we don't see God like we should. We got to get back to the hour. We say, God, restore my fear for you. Restore my, restore my fear. God, give me a mind to seek you in this season. When I first came into God, when I got an understanding of this word, that word taught me how to fear God because I was seeing how God wasn't no joke, how God didn't take sin lightly, how God was killing people at the altars. I was seeing how this word of God was being fulfilled in my life. That alone will give you a fear when you see the word being fulfilled. So did you not understand that the wages of sin is death? And at the gift that God is eternal life, when you've seen all this stuff come to pass, when you started seeing how you was like, God, listen, I don't want this stuff to catch up with me. God, I'm living like the devil. God, my life is out of order. God, I know I'm out of order. You know when you're out of God. You know when you stepped out of God. You know when you're not living according to the word. And then when you know God is real, when you know God's word is going to be fulfilled, when you know you're going to reap what you sow. I'm trying to help somebody to get back to the place where you get a fear for God. God, restore my fear in this hour. God, don't have me walking in this life thinking I'm right when I'm wrong in certain situations. When I step out of the word, don't, don't let me think I'm right when I'm wrong. God, put a fear up on me. Put a spirit of fear up on me to fear you, not the world, not the fear of heart attack, not the fear of car, car wreck. See, we not the fear of that kind of stuff. That's not the kind of fear I'm talking about. I'm talking about fearing the God who gave you life and also a God that can uh, create death. Why wouldn't you want to fear a God like that? After you didn't see what happened to people that play with God, you seen what happened to people that step in and out of God. God, you don't have to chase me. You don't have to whoop me into position. God, teach me to fear you in this hour. So we said, beloved, in Proverbs 9 and 10, I'm going to move forward. Proverbs 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 10. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. One thing about it, when you get wisdom, when you first come into wisdom, you get a fear of God to say, you know what? This man ain't nothing to play with. That's why when I say, beloved, when I when I first got in God, I, w I was so afraid to just backslide and go do my own thing. I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I know God, he's a God of mercy. I know that, that he's a God of grace. I'm not taking that from God. We know that. But when you start perverting the grace, when you start giving yourself a license to sin, do you understand what sin abounds, grace abounds much more? Yeah, we understand that. 
But God forbid that you keep living on and going forth in sin. That's not even what he was talking about, that you can just do what you want to do. That's how I know when you don't got no fear, when you think you can just do what you want to do and there not be no consequences. There's no way you can say you got fear, but all you minister is grace. That grace going to cover it all. That God's grace is sufficient. What's the opposite of sufficient? Insufficient. The grace is only sufficient for those who are seeking God. It's not sufficient for everybody else. Go to your bank account and try to draw funds out. Guess what it's going to say when you don't have the money in there? Insufficient. First natural, then spiritual. The grace is not available to everybody. Grace ain't available to everybody. They say grace can't run out. That's a lie. That's a lie. I don't know who told you that. Grace can run out. It can run out when God don't give it to you. What if God take away the grace? Do you understand? You don't have grace to fornicate and keep fornicating. We, we have an advocate, which is Jesus Christ, for when we do fall and we sin. We understand that. We know that now. So like I said, I'm going to cut that flesh on tonight. This is not just you're going to get you're going to get your uh, you're, you're going to get your check in the mail. You're going to get your breakthrough. It, it's not that kind of message because I, I really want to help y'all. We got to get God to restore the fear back to us, y'all. We we need that. We need that. We need the fear restored. Now, what did God also say in this word that we willfully sin, there remain of no more sacrifice. There remain of no more sacrifice for when we sin. For one sacrifice has he perfected forever for them that are what? Sanctified. So we already know we have the sacrifice. We know we have saved uh, through the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. Bible. We already know that. We already know without the shedding of blood, there wouldn't be no remission of sin. One thing about when something is in remission is put out a hole. So we know Christ died for us. We know Christ did that. But see, when we start rejecting, what greater of a salvation if we reject it? If you start rejecting the salvation... Let's say I can do what I want to do, that I can live how I want to live. That will let me know that you think that Christ died for no reason. So Christ just died for no reason and we can just do what we want to do. If that was the case, I should still be out fornicating, shouldn't have got married, still should be out lying, cheating. I should still be doing everything like that. Still be going to the club, still selling dope. Still got two or three women. So you just telling me I should just go back to that lifestyle and it's all in vain. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just go live in adultery and just say, hey, we all fall short of the glory. We all fall short of the glory. Oh, he, oh I'm going to make it to heaven anyway. That's the kind of attitude we got. And that you know what? That's when you don't have fear. That's when you don't have fear. To tell me, Sister Dawkins, I can go back to selling dope. I can go live in a dope. I can go cheat on my wife every night and ain't no consequences. I can go back to playing blackjack at the Hard Rock every night. I can go back to the... I might as well get the, get the Coronas again. With the lime, man. I might as well start smoking the loud again. I'm saying, so you telling me that I can just go back to what I used to do? So let me go back to just, I mean, that lifestyle, being a home mugger, sexual immorality, two, three women at a time. I'm saying you, what you're saying is by saying grace covers it all. That's just, that's just like saying, you know what I mean? That Christ died for nothing. Christ also, man, when I tell I'm, I'm just, I'm about to give y'all all kinds of word before I even give y'all a scripture that I had. <laughs> That listen, don't think I've came to abolish the law or the prophets, but I came to fulfill it. 
I got a message I'm getting ready to do about the mercy of God. One thing about it, Christ had mercy. But he also told he also told the woman that was caught in an act of adultery to go and sin no more. That right there put a fear up on her. To say, if I do this again, something gonna happen to me, a worse thing gonna come up on me. Christ wasn't no Joe. Christ came putting that word down. There was a lot of stuff they couldn't accept Christ's word. The stuff that he was saying. But like I said, we got to get to a place, beloved, that we feel. We feel. So he said, the, he said that the beginning of wisdom is fearing the Lord. Y'all, when I first started coming, I remember saying this. How I was telling one of my mentors, I was like, I'm scared of him. I'm scared of him. I don't, I don't want to displease God. I don't just want to be up with a microphone I still got sin in my life. I, I, I was scared to just, you know what I mean, just, just come into God's presence any kind of way. I, I mean, when I tell y'all, when I first got saved, I started having a fear for God because I knew who God was. I knew who God was. You couldn't tell me that God wasn't real. So it gave me a fear for God. Every, th every, time, you turn, every time I turn around, I'm saying, God, forgive me. God, please, God, forgive me. God, don't let me die in my sin. God, forgive me, Lord. I, I, God, I thank you. Even when I was messed up, y'all, I'm talking about even when I was messed up, I would still be saying, God, forgive me for my sins. Even when I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Because you know what? I had a fear for him. I came up believing God. We came up having a reverence for God. And see, this is why I, I just, I hate that these babies, they're not coming up in God. They're not coming up having a fear. Don't you know, your fear, that's where your protection come from. That's where your protection come from. And like what many of us, we were, we've we lost our fear for God. Many of us had a fear, but we lost our fear. And like I said, I remember when I first came in God, I started getting wisdom. I started getting a fear to say, you know what? I, I can't just keep living like this. I can't keep coming in and coming in God and coming in the house of God, living any kind of way, one foot in, one foot out. I always had a fear, still got a fear. Because I don't want to mess up, think I can get back to God and not be able to get back to God. That's what I fear, Sister Dawkins. Thinking I can bastobobosay, thinking I can backslide and get back to God. There are many people who backslid and just didn't get back. There are many who backslid and, and, you know, stepped away from God and just never entered back in. They ain't never entered back in. And like I say, one thing about it, it's already bad enough. This walk right here ain't easy. It's not already. It's not easy. Some of us this close to backslide. Some of us this close to losing our reverence for God and losing our fear for God. Because we give it up in our walk with God. We we reject the salvation. We reject the God's word. We take it in a joke. You already don't want to pray. You already don't want to come to church. You don't want to see God like you used to. Going back to drinking, going back to smoking, going back to home mugging, going back to fornicating, just backsliding. And I'm not throwing off on nobody, but this is prophetic because God wants the backslider to come back in this season. Begin to enter in because I'm telling y'all, this is one of those hours that he's sealing a lot of people's fate. He's turning people over to reprobate mind. He reprobate minds, he's searing consciousness. People can't hear God, they can't fear God. God, what I want you to do in this season, God, don't let me lose my fear for you. And don't have me thinking I'm right when I'm wrong. Don't have me thinking I'm right for holding grudges. Don't have me thinking I'm right for lying. Don't have me thinking I'm right for looking at the wrong woman. Don't have me thinking I'm right for that stuff. Don't let that wonder and I trick me. Don't let this flesh trick me. Don't let this flesh pull you up out of God. 
It's already bad enough you got these influences, these outside influences. Every day you got somebody trying to talk you up out of God. Every day you got the enemy plaguing your mind with thoughts. Trying to draw you back to the marijuana. Trying to draw you back to the club. Every day it's already a battle. It's a battle to stay in God. So imagine it, imagine the battle for the people that's trying to get to them. When it's a battle for you, for you to stay in. Just imagine. That's why you start standing in the gap for the people that's fighting to get to God. Stand in the gap for people that's fighting to get a word like this. To say, if I can just hear a word to just help me to live right. If I can just get a mind to just listen to what the man of God got to say. I see him teaching. I see him on Facebook teaching. I see him, but give me a mind, God, to hear. God, break this reprobate state so I can get an ear to hear what the man of God is saying. Y'all in, and it's already hard for you to stay in. When there's people, listen, imagine the ones that's fighting to get in. It's even harder for them. The enemy putting such a double bull scene. The enemy putting such a deep sleep up on people. In the church. We backslide in the church. You don't have to leave the church to backslide. You can still be sitting in the house and still backslide. You don't have to go back in the world to backslide. These are people who lost their fear for God. They lost their reverence for God. It started with one little thing. They started taking down on their praise. Started compromising. Stop giving. Stop showing love. Started stepping out of that world and then guess what happened? Little by little, they started backing down. Enemy started putting a sleep up on them. Stop operating. You was on the usher board, stop operating. You was on the choir, stop operating. Stop doing everything. You was in the kitchen, food ministry, stop operating. Something you love to do. You was in a pulpit, you were ministering. Opening up benedictions, praying before service. Had a fire testimony. You was a praying missionary, the praying mother. Started losing their fear for God. Because somebody told them it don't take all of that. It don't take all of that to live for God. It don't take all of that to be connected to God. Because you start letting people get in your ear. So to let the enemy put a sleep up on you, God, listen, God, restore our fear. The reason why some of us ain't mindful of that word no more, the reason why some of us went back and started backsliding, because we lost our fear. God, don't take away my fear in this season, amen. And I had a scripture. Are y'all enjoying this song tonight? I, I really want to encourage you. I know I know it's not you're going to get blessed and it's your season, but I'm, I'm, I want to get to a place well, I want God to restore my fear, a fear that I once had, to keep me connected to him so I don't disconnect in this season. God, I want a closer walk with you in this season. God, I want a made up mind, a fixed up heart. God, what I want you to do, God, I want you to restore my dedication. God, restore that thirst. He said, bless to those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I got the same word. I got the same word that's going to draw the people. If I can give you everything for your flesh, I would, but I can't do that. Not when your soul is at stake, when I see people ain't fearing God. We got to get back to the place where we fear God. Don't you want your fear back from God? Your fear going to take you to another level. When God see you fearing him, you want him, and you walking you walking lightly in that word, not trying to step out, not trying to offend, you know what I mean? Not not trying to get offended and you know, not trying to grieve the Holy Spirit. When God see you walking right, God gonna anoint you, God gonna use those kind of people. They got a reverence for him, 
got a respect for his word. That got a respect for his sanctuary. That got respect for his men and women of God. They got respect for the little children that's coming up in the kingdom. See, when God see you doing that, God going to anoint y'all like never before when you get your fear back. Amen. And I want to show you something real quick, y'all. Out of 2 Timothy. Let's see. what I believe it was 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. He says, for God have not given us a spirit of fear. He's not talking about this, the fear. This He's not talking about the kind of fear with anxiety. Y'all scared, the fearful. He's not talking about that kind of fear. Like you got a fear of heights. You got a fear of roller coasters. He's not talking about that kind of fear. He says, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. That's not the fear I'm talking about. Not the one where you're scared. You got your back up again. Not that kind of fear. See, this is the kind of fear right here will I have you walking in that word. Being obedient to the word of God. Not rejecting the truth. Accepting sound doctrine. One thing about it, when I when I begin to hear God, and when God begin to speak to me, and I begin to hear God clear, and I begin to see this stuff come to pass. When God first started speaking to me, I saw stuff come to pass. I really didn't. I, I took heed to what God was saying. But the more and more God started to speak, and the more and more I started seeing these things come to pass, uh, really quick. Uh, expedient words when I started hearing God speak and this stuff would manifest it gave me more of a fear for God because I knew for sure there's going to be something he speak and it's going to be fearful and I got to hold on to it that's how I got this message about the fear of God God's voice alone can be fearful because you know it's getting ready to come to pass that can be fearful or you just get nervous, your heart just flutter because you heard what God said, but it put a fear up on you. That kind of fear. That God, Lord, please, Lord, don't let it be me. God, don't let it be me that's going to taste death. I'm talking about that kind of fear. Don't let it, don't let it be me that has to go through this severe trial. You start having that kind of fear when God starts speaking to you. When God starts speaking to you like that and you hear God and you know it's accurate, it's going to teach you how to fear him. It's going to teach you how to fear him. If you haven't experienced that, get in God. One thing about it, when, when God was speaking from the mountain to the people and they got so scared. They said, Moses, we scared. We don't, please tell him to stop speaking. Because the, his voice alone scared the people. It put up both still cool side. It put a fear up on them people when they were speaking. He said, Moses, let him speak to you. Don't let him speak to us. See, the, the voice of God alone is fearful. It's fearful. You know why? Because you know it's real. It lets you know everything that I done read is real. Like this man really speaking to me and things coming to pass. Prophetess Roberta, do you know how fearful that is? To say, wow, this, this is real. That right there alone will teach you to fear God. When you get the voice of God, that's how I got this message, y'all. How I started fearing when God started speaking. I started fearing it because I knew whatever he spoke is getting ready to come to pass. I started getting scared. I started getting fearful. But that's the kind of fear you need to let you know, don't play with them. I thank you for the fear. I thank you for it. He didn't give us a fear of the world. He's talking about that kind of the spirit of fear, of fear in the world. Fear and attacks. 
to fear lies, fear that. He didn't give us, see, we, we, don't, we don't have to fear for that. Thank God for that kind of fear, but I want the fear of God. I want the fear of God. Make it in your prayer, beloved. Say, God, restore my fear in this hour. God, I don't fear your word like I used to. God, I don't, I don't fear your commandments. Do many of y'all fear his commandments? He said, you love me, keep my commandments. Rakobobose. When you have a fear, you learn to repent. You don't want to get it right before God. Say, God, don't let me die in my mess. Don't let me die in sin. Lord, forgive me for whatever I did to that brother. Forgive me for whatever I did to that sister. Lord, forgive me for the thought. Forgive me for the wicked imaginations. Lord, forgive me for not reading your word. Forgive me for not obeying your instruction. Because God, you already told me that, uh, that disobedience, a wrath comes up on the children of disobedience. God, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to offend your presence. God, I don't want to grieve your spirit. God, help me to keep my mouth shut, especially against the people of God, against your anointed. We don't even fear speaking against the people of God. You don't even fear putting your mouth on a man of God, the woman of God. When God told you, "Touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm," we don't even fear that. We don't fear walking into somebody else's marriage. We don't fear living in sin no more. What happened in this hour? The people are losing their fear. Rakobobo say, we don't even fear backsliding. You don't fear backsliding when you can backslide and disconnect and you not get back. That's a fearful thing. God, don't disconnect me in this season. Keep me connected. God, don't turn me over to a reprobate. God, shine your naboko safe. God, shine your light down from heaven. If there's anything that's in me that shouldn't be, God, ask you to get it up out of me. God, restore my passion for ministry. Restore my passion for the word. God, give me my hunger back. God, give me my dedication back. Restore to me the joy the, of my salvation. God, break that up both sides. Break this lukewarm spirit in this season. Break the confusion, God. Break the clutter in my mind. Loose the shackles in this season. Restore the fear in Jesus' name. I just want to bless you all on the midnight cry, just flowing without fail. And I just want to encourage y'all with an awesome teaching about the fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Do you understand? Once you get wisdom, get an understanding of who God is. Say, God, restore the fear in this hour. God, help me to get an understanding of your word. God, don't let me backslide. Let me stay anchored in this season. God, break the stony heart in this hour so I can receive. God, don't have me rejecting your word. Don't have me rejecting salvation. God, don't have me lukewarm. Don't have me in and out. God, break this bipolar spirit, this in and out spirit, this seesaw spirit. I'm up today, then down tomorrow. One minute I'm in God, then I'm out of God. One minute I'm prophesying, then the next minute I'm quiet. Don't want to quote scripture. Don't want to minister. Don't want to do what thus says the Lord. God, help me to remain obedient in this season. I just want to bless y'all all. Another midnight cry. How many of y'all received this message? Type, I received. Amen. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Yes, it is my birthday. God bless you all. Happy birthday to me. 32 years old. Turned 32 today. Um, midnight. So I thank y'all uh, for the birthday wishes. Also, y'all sow. You can also sow into my birthday, sow into my ministry. Whatever you want to do please give as well in this season. Amen. God bless y'all. I believe God's getting ready to restore in this season. Amen. Anybody need any prayer? God bless you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Appreciate God for you. Amen. I receive. I receive. Happy birthday, Prophet Travis. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Lisa. 
God bless you. Anybody need any prayer? Also, y'all can also email me as well. You need all my information is also on the profile. And please also give in this hour. Fertile ground. Get ready to receive what God's getting ready to do. God getting ready to move not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. Amen. But I'm going to release a prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight just for the spirit of obedience. God, we thank you for your fear in this hour. God, restore to us the fear. God, restore to us the joy of our salvation. God, we thank you for the manifold grace. God, we thank you for every manifold trial, everything you're getting ready to send us through. God, we're already overcomers. We're already victorious over every situation. God, move in this hour, Lord. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to bless y'all. And we be back on tomorrow night. God has some awesome teachers. I was going to come on this afternoon and do a word, but I was so sleepy. Um, I had to get up early this morning. But I think tomorrow I may try to come on and do a message um, tomorrow noonday. But I'm not sure yet uh, because there's messages that I have to do that I haven't had a chance to get to. um, Because I have messages lined up for next week as well. But God's been downloading. There's some things I've just been wanting to speak. And as you see, there's messages that God gives me. Um, always flowing, you know, never compromising, always have an ear to hear what God has to say unto the people. And I ask God, I say, God, give me a message for the people because I don't be wanting to come on and just utter any kind of thing. It's always messages for the soul. It's never just something for your flesh. You know, I know we want to hoop, we want to holler, we love prophecy, but we don't want nothing for our spirit. I mean, we need this flesh cut on. You know, like I said, I know it's not one of those messages that, you know, you're going to get a check in the mail and you're going to be blessed, but that's not what we need. You need a message that's going to cut that flesh, that's going to say conviction. God, we restore the fear back to your people in this hour. Teach us how to fear you. Because truth be told, we don't fear God like we used to. Amen. Make it in your prayer, God. Teach me to fear you. Also, God, teach me to reverence your name in this hour. God bless y'all. I'll be back on tomorrow night with another Midnight Cry. Thank you for the birthday uh, birthday wishes as well. Follow High Rose Ministry on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, uh, yeah, I appreciate that, Sister Dawkins. Please follow me. You can also follow me on YouTube as well. And like I say, the messages are always going forth. And I believe God's going to speak some things in this season for his people. Amen. But God bless y'all. Love y'all. Have a good night. Be blessed.